Hello, and welcome to this week's episode of the Energy Central Power Perspectives Podcast, the show that brings leading minds to discuss the latest challenges and trends transforming and modernizing the energy systems and the utility industry of the future. Now, let's talk energy. I'm Jason Price, Energy Central podcast host and director with West Monroe, coming to you from New York City. And with me, as always, from Orlando, Florida, is Energy Central producer and community manager, Matt Chester. Matt, in a fun wrinkle for today's episode, our guests will be announcing some significant news that will likely create a ripple across the industry. Are you ready for this? You're right, Jason. I, I think this is the first for us. I know from our conversations already with today's guests that we're going to be learning some really important information about the upcoming direction of the utility sector. So not only are we getting some pertinent present day information, but I think more importantly, we're going to be getting some insight into the future. Agreed. And I'm excited as well. So let's get started. Today, we'll be shining a spotlight on the critical role that geospatial technology serves in many of today's challenges that energy and utilities are trying to solve as we move toward accelerating decarbonization. What does fancy mapping have to do with our work to reduce climate change? Well, this technology has a lot to do with it. Geospatial technology can be a major difference maker for initiatives related to renewables, carbon neutrality, infrastructure management, worker safety, and much more. As we will learn today, we are at a pivotal moment when the role of geospatial is expanding dramatically. In fact, Many of the highest priority initiatives and utilities strategic plans simply aren't possible to achieve without the help of geospatial technology. And while we've had guests on Power Perspectives talk about the technology advancements and proliferations of GIS, we've not explored the applications and the critical role it serves for our utility of the future. So I can't think of a more suitable person to have on the show to explain this further than our guests today. Jamie Crawford is the Senior Vice President of Strategic Industries at Critigen, which works with utilities to leverage location-based data and geospatial technology from major initiatives. Jamie and her team oversee Critigen's work with utilities and energy companies in strategic ways across their operations. Also mentioned at the top of the show, Jamie has an important announcement to make in the world of geospatial technology, and we will discuss this as well. So, Jamie Crawford, welcome to today's episode of Energy Central Power Perspectives Podcast. Thanks so much, Jason and Matt. I'm really excited to be here, and thanks for inviting me. It's our pleasure. Jamie, thank you for joining us. This is a timely topic because geospatial has such an important role to play, and yet it largely flies under the radar in our industry. Can we step back for a moment and explain what location-based data is and why geospatial technology is important for utilities? Yeah, thanks, Jason. Yeah, location-based data really covers a wide range of topics. It can be anything from an address or a GPS coordinate to data that was created using aerial imagery or, or satellite imagery. And what you hear in the industry quite often is that 80% of data within an organization has some type of location component to it and corresponds to a place on the earth. So within a utilities, most location data represents things like poles and, and pipe and the attributes that are associated with those features. So, you know, geospatial data is used to model the utility system by mapping those assets. And it's used also on a daily basis to manage and monitor, inspect your systems. It's also used to plan future system improvements and to help risk modeling. Utilities will also find that location data is critical into making major initiatives around renewable energy and net zero successful. All right, fantastic. But this technology has a long history in our industry. You know, every utility has its own geospatial team, but previously they had been more limited in role and capacity than today. So why do you see this change occurring? Yeah, I mean, maybe I'll start with a little bit of history. You know, utilities have always had maps, right? A lot, many times it was a paper-based systems, and then they went through an effort to kind of digitize that into a, an, into a CAD or a GIS-based system. So that was kind of the first step in transitioning from that paper into the digital form. 
Surprisingly, many utilities still have a mix of modern GIS with a robust database, but they still rely on scanned drawings that represent detailed information about their systems. And most GIS teams are associated or aligned with an engineering department and really focused on meeting the needs of that specific group. And while there is a trend to send out web maps to a lot of different departments within a utility, GIS is still underutilized. And we really need to get it moved from what I kind of refer to as the basement to the boardroom. And maps are really just the tip of the iceberg on how geospatial technologies can be used to address the challenges that utilities are facing today. GIS is being integrated with a lot of other critical business systems and operations, but we're still in the early stages and there's huge potential to apply this technology to solve a lot of problems within the utility. Utility leaders are really seeing a proliferation of spatial data and applications all around them and and want it integrated with their daily operations. A couple of examples, obviously, around aging infrastructure. We know that that's an ongoing problem within utilities. So we need to understand their assets, what is at risk, and making sure that things are being maintained and inspected at the current frequency. We also need to make sure that utilities are prepared to respond to extreme weather events. This is happening more often. You're seeing wildfires in the West and you know flooding and storms in, in all parts of the country and being prepared to handle that. Really having an understanding of your system in a spatial way really helps utilities prepare. Another area is aging workforce. So many utilities rely on their field crews that are out there that have been with utilities for you know, 20, 30 years, and that workforce is starting to age. So we need to get that information out of the heads of the field workers and into your databases across the system. And then lastly, as we're starting to see a transition to more and more um, renewables, siting of those facilities, as well as understanding your existing system and network connectivity and flow are going to be critical. All right. So definitely we're approaching a critical mass in our industry. It's almost like a standard that every utility has to operate from. And certainly, even though there are some utilities where that paper-based uh, notepad with the drawings are under, sitting underneath the, the driver's seat of a uh, field operator, there's much more reliance and dependency on moving this to a technology platform. Totally get that. And most forward-looking utilities are going to see the much larger impact they can have and we'll elevate it in a strategic way. So that brings us to some news that we teased out at the beginning of the intro. News which underscores how geospatial is growing in importance and impact. So Jamie, I give you the floor. Well, great. I mean, I'm really excited to share this news with Energy Central. Um, we really believe that at Critigen that the industry is at a tipping point and really ready now to fully embrace the usage of location-based data and solutions. And as a response, We are expanding our services and solutions around mapping and location intelligence. And as an investment in our vision, we've decided to change our name to Locana and focus on everything location. The name we find pretty interesting. It comes from the root words locus for location and ana, which is a collection of information on a place, person, or thing, and really feel that that name better represents the vision that we have and the impact that we want to have in the world. So our expanded vision will challenge us to discover new ways to apply geospatial technology and data within a utility, as well as other industries that would gain value from this technology. And as I mentioned before, we feel that geospatial technology could be used more extensively within a utility, and our focus is to work with our customers to leverage the existing investment they've already made in GIS and identify areas to apply location intelligence that will be a game changer for the utility. Interesting. It seems some of the motivation of this name change to Locana is based on the reflection of how critical location-based data is becoming in business and utilities specifically. Is that a fair assumption? Oh, yeah, you're definitely correct. I mean, really, there's this convergence of new demand, new data types, and new expectations that have really altered kind of the geospatial world. And we're seeing a widespread demand for novel approaches to mapping and location intelligence. So Everyone is now used to seeing maps on their smartphones and, you know, whether it's in their car or they're ordering food. And so there's this now expectation that it's available and the new workforce is expecting this technology. So we need to make advances in that area. There's also the continuous explosion of spatial data. I mean, that's been happening for years, but now the number of sensors, wearables, data coming from vehicles and satellites really require solutions to make it more accessible, consumable and actionable. So again, that imagery coming in or 
now drones. And so now what do you do with that data? The volume and frequency now is can be kind of overwhelming to IT departments for sure. And we feel that we've got a unique perspective and skills to be able to help utilities access the right information at the right time and turn it into information so that they can make decisions. And then the last trend that we're really seeing is an emerging requirement to blend nimble and focused apps with enterprise business applications. You know, end users want simple applications. They don't want to have to be trained for two days to figure out how to use something out in the field. They want easy, simple to use, but it also has to be integrated with the back office application. So they're able to get the information that they need to do their jobs, perform the tasks, and make sure that the results from the work they did can actually get back into the enterprise systems. So with these kind of three things, we really, again, feel like there's been a little bit of a tipping point in the organization and are just really excited to be in the the industry right now. It's a very exciting time. So with the new name change to Locana, do you have a mission statement and can you share it with us? Oh, for sure. And, you know, I think it's short and sweet, but definitely to the point. We believe that mapping and location intelligence can help solve the world's most pressing infrastructure, sustainability, social and business challenges. And and as the geography geek that I am just can really truly embrace that. And I've you know been 20 years in the industry and really have seen tons of examples of where that's really the case, but we're really wanting to take it to the next level now. Okay, fantastic. Well, given that, let's dive into some of the ways that utilities should be using geospatial in a more strategic way. Clean energy is making headlines left and right. So I have to imagine renewables represents a major area for geospatial. Is that correct? Yes, it, it is correct. And Geospatial technology has played a role in site selection for renewables for quite some time. I even started my career out doing a lot of projects around site selections for you know large scale wind farms and solar farms. So finding a site that has both the wind potential or solar potential, but also viable from a land use and ownership perspective, environmental impacts and costs to connect to the grid all require a robust GIS system and spatial analytics capability. So that's been something that's been around for quite some time, along with geospatial technology being able to be used for calculating solar potential for rooftops so homeowners can make some decisions about whether or not they want to invest in that asset. Those are some examples of how geospatial has been used for renewables for quite some time. But I think there's now some opportunities to kind of expand on some of those traditional usage. I was pondering the other day about climate change, you know, so some of the solar and wind potential that was determined many years ago potentially are are changing. So having um, the ability to update those models so operators can predict and have some visibility into what the future solar potential and wind potential are. And again, a lot of those weather inputs and terrain inputs, environmental inputs all have a spatial component to it. And together, GIS can really make a lot of those predictions. There's also a need for small scale site selection. So as part of our vision of Locana, um, we really want to be able to bring some new solutions and services to the market. We think this is an area that we want to be exploring in the future. We feel that there's some creative approaches for utilities that could be used for smaller renewable sites. So for example, identifying locations with low construction costs that are either close or already connected to a grid to place smaller scale wind and solar. So that's a lot of data collection, and we really feel we've got the tools and capabilities to provide some of those solutions together for utilities to expand the areas where they could have renewable generation. Another area geospatial technology can contribute is with distributed energy resources. With an increase in solar panels on more rooftops, these resources will have a larger and larger impact on the grid. I was reading recently a study from the U.S. Department of Energy. Um, They published a study last year on the locational value of distributed energy resources. And if utilities really understood the potential value of those resources based on location, they could start targeting those areas and provide incentive programs. So that's an area that I think utilities could really start looking into. Another area for renewables is really on the operations side. So just like utilities are integrating GIS with their controls and enterprise asset management system for distribution and transmission, utilities could do the same thing with their renewable generation sites. Having insight into the current output of each asset or where the failure has occurred in a spatial context can really expose patterns that may go unseen on a spreadsheet. Yeah, those are just a few examples on the renewable front. 
Great examples that you provided. Thank you for that. So let's talk about moving from renewables to the net zero emission goals that utilities are pledging. They are making major progress by focusing on lowest hanging fruit, which you kind of covered. What role can and does geospatial play in accomplishing those broader net zero goals uh, past the early wins? Yeah. Utilities are, are really faced with some significant challenges over the decades to come. I think everybody realizes that. And geospatial data and solutions are primed and ready to be used for, to solve those problems. I think the, the most significant area that GIS can play a part in is really to help model and understand the system that utilities have in place. So data, data, data is the big thing. Detailed information about your system will become even more important, and the spatial aspect of your system will be critical with the increased amount of energy coming from renewables and the prosumer. Um, as energy transition occurs, we'll go from one direction system to a bi-directional flow of power, and understanding that both from a modeling perspective and a safety perspective is going to be really important. So utilities must have good data quality on both their network and visibility into behind the meter resources. Um, they must also understand some of the weather patterns and be able to predict the impact on, on power generation as the weather changes. I think you've probably seen this in some utilities. There's, you know, now people on staff that are really um, meteorologists now. And as you know, weather information is inherently spatial and luckily can be easily integrated into most GIS applications. When we start kind of transitioning and talking about the gas utility, again, there's a, a change in the market to blend in hydrogen with more natural gas systems. And in order to do so, you really need to understand your network, both including the pipe materials, as well as how the system flows and how it can be isolated. So again, back to the data front, really having quality information in your GIS to help model and predict how the system is going to operate are going to be critical moving forward, especially as we move into meeting the goals around net zero. So geospatial technology is really going to give the utility a 360 degree view of their operations, which includes their asset, their people and external factors like weather. Yeah, you know, we're also seeing the, you know, the business model of the utility morph, if you will. You know, some are getting into broadband and telecom, conducting M&A activity and, and such. So could you talk a little bit about sort of the untraditional utility geospatial um, activities that you're seeing going on in our space in recent times? We're seeing a lot of M&A activity, and we've actually been lucky to be a part of a couple of those projects um, recently. But unfortunately, a lot of those is utilities are planning for you know that acquisition of asset data from a different utility. They're underestimate, feel like, or some utilities feel like it's just a kind of a lift and shift. Like I'm going to take the GIS from one utility and just copy and paste everything over and put it into my new one. And that can be kind of problematic because no two utilities really have the same systems or data models or approaches as much as you would like to hope. And no two GISs are necessarily the same. So many utilities have different software platforms, they have different data models, they have different integration approaches. So, you know, with all that said, we had a great opportunity recently with an M&A activity at South Jersey Industries. They had acquired Elizabethtown Gas from Southern Company. And South Jersey Industries had outsourced their GIS for their South Jersey gas operations. So they didn't even have their own enterprise GIS. So they took it as an opportunity, right? So as part of these acquisitions, I think there's tons of opportunities to advance your systems as those programs are happening. So they took the opportunity to build their own new GIS system from the ground up and actually their own GIS department. So it was more than just the tools and data. It was hiring and building out that capability within their organization. So we were able to help them migrate their data from the Esri geometric network, which is kind of an older system that Esri has to their new utility network model and deliver a very modern GS platform that South Jersey industry can build upon moving forward. So it's integrated with their enterprise asset management system. And now South Jersey Industries is deploying some very, what I was referring to earlier, those nimble applications that are integrated with their business systems. So they're delivering these focused applications for leak management, material tracking and traceability, and many more. So Again, I think there's some a lot of activity in the market. I think there's some opportunities that utilities could take when they're merging together 
different databases and different systems together into a new enterprise system. I like that example you gave because that follows up with my next question, which is basically a utility may not realize the value that and role that a geospatial technology can play in overcoming some of the challenges. So what advice and suggestions do you have to utility to think about the possibilities of such a technology and how does one take the next step? Well, I might be a little bit biased because I am a geospatial professional. And so I think geospatial and GIS should really have a larger seat at the table. As I mentioned before, I think taking it from the basement to the boardroom is really important. And unfortunately today, a lot of utilities don't have a senior leader that is empowered to kind of make decisions within an organization or it is distributed across a bunch of different groups. So I think really having some strong governance for a GIS team, including both the IT and the business side is extremely important making it more about more than just about making maps. Maps, again, are just the tip of the iceberg. And if we really kind of unlock the power of maps and location intelligence, there's a lot of opportunities that can be had within a utility. And I think that we could be leveraging some investments that we're making on those core platforms. So I think as most of our listeners know, there's been a lot of money on standing up an enterprise GIS system to edit and manage the database. Um, and do the core things around asset asset inventory and those types of things. But I think there's a lot of applications that could be deployed if there's a seat at the table for a GIS leader within the organization. So asking those questions, having the leaders within the other groups asking about how could we apply geospatial technology to help solve these problems. I've had a lot of examples where we went to different utilities and there's, you know, mapping supervisors or an IT leader from a support structure, but there's not kind of one person that's looking out for the overarching strategy for GIS across the entire organization. So that's a pretty big job because it includes a lot of IT related tasks, but also business focus. And you also have to understand where the technology is moving in the future. But I really feel like there's a role to play at a more senior level whether it's a VP level or a director level, but really having that opportunity to share the vision of what GIS could be at a utility is going to be really important moving forward. And then obviously there's always the part of data, right? Data is always important. I think utilities need to look for creative and innovative ways to keep their data up to date or have a self-cleaning system in place. And maybe I'll give an example of that is having some tools or processes in place. You have field crews that are out on a daily basis working on the system, trying to get information from them or while they're out in the field, make it easy and simple and have processes and tools to get it back into your GS department's hand to make those improvements. So making sure that you have easy to use applications and processes as well as potentially the use of some AI and artificial intelligence to help make improvements to your data as well. There's always room for improvement on data. And as I mentioned before, I think that's going to be really critical in meeting the needs of net zero moving forward. So, yeah. You've been at this for a while. So can we ask you about some of the fun and unusual applications of geospatial and industry? You work with a lot of utilities. So I'm sure you've seen some very creative applications. What comes to mind, if any, and, uh, how does it speak to what the future might hold for geospatial in the utility industry? Yeah, I think one example that I've seen recently is for a, a West Coast utility that has some hydro facilities. And so they manage a lot of forests and they are actually using GIS to help calculate some carbon offsets. So, again, as we're moving to net zero, there's going to be a variety of different ways that we get there. And no one way is going to do that entirely. But I think this idea of managing your holdings, whether it's land holdings or asset information and trying to figure out how best to utilize it are going to be really important. The use of drones, I think everybody has seen this, different applications. I think there's a lot of utilities now that have their own group that is just responsible for flying drones for either data collection or inspections are really interesting. There's new sensors that are going on drones to, to identify corrosion on transmission lines that are probably not even visible to the eye. So those are pretty exciting also sensing methane leaks via drones as well. So that is pretty exciting use of technology, you know, because it increases efficiencies, but also keeps our field workers safe, right? 
Those are a couple kind of fun examples that I've seen. But I also, maybe I'll put in a little bit of, I love to see utilities do more of this. You know, the customer is super important. I, I put my customer hat on all the time and would love to see more information from utilities about energy conservation opportunities. If there's some type of outage, sharing more information about when my field tech is going to be at my house. Um, what are we doing about a post storm? So more of that on maps, because I think everybody can relate to a map and consume it very quickly. So I think doing more with mapping on customer engagement is going to be huge. And then as customers become prosumers, I think there's going to be some interesting use cases around that as well. This is a great discussion, a really fascinating topic, Jamie. Thank you for sharing the news about the name change Lacan and its expanding work in supporting utilities to leverage geospatial in a, such a strategic way. You know, we look forward to you and our community members keeping these important conversations going at Energy Central. Please continue to be active in the Community Central platform. And thanks again for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. It was a great discussion. You can always reach Jamie through the Energy Central platform, where she welcomes your questions and comments. And on behalf of the entire Energy Central team, thanks to everyone for listening today. Further, we want to thank Lokana for making today's episode possible. And with Jamie Crawford on the call, Jamie, why don't you kick off the new name change and the mission and description of Lokana's to our community members? All right. Thanks, Jason. Lokana, the location data and technology company, provides services and software products to solve the world's most pressing business, climate, and social challenges. With over 30 years of experience, we are a global leader in both enterprise GIS implementations and innovative application development using proprietary and open source technology. By taking a location-first approach to problem solving, we build, implement, and connect solutions for our public and private clients in a wide range of domains, utilities, land, and facility management, conservation, international development, and technology, to name a few. Thank you, Jamie. And once again, I'm your host, Jason Price. Plug in and stay fully charged in the discussion by hopping into the community at energycentral.com. And see you next time at the Energy Central Power Perspectives Podcast. <music>